Welcome and thank you for your interest in our paper. On behalf of my co-authors, Marc Abdelaziz, Lukas Mecke, Alias Saad, Jonas Auda, Uwe Grünefeld, Florian Alt and Stefan Schneegers, I will present to you our work with the title Understanding User Identification in Virtual Reality through Behavioral Biometrics and the Effect of Body Normalization. Applications for virtual reality often require to know their user's identity. This is necessary as it allows the application to personalize the experience by loading or setting personal preferences or granting access to personal information. Current approaches to identify users employ authentication schemes such as pins or passwords that are entered through handheld controllers and a virtual keyboard. Previous work has shown that these traditional forms of authentication are vulnerable to observation from a bystander who can easily spy on the hand gesture of the immersed VR user. Also, traditional authentication schemes that are currently widely used need yet another password to be remembered and interrupt the VR experience throughout the password prompt. In our work, we alternatively employ behavioral biometrics in combination with two task-based scenarios to identify the users of our VR application. Our scenarios mimic common VR activities such as bowling and archery and are probably only two of many possible examples. Users interact naturally with the scenarios and transparently in the background, the spatial data of the handheld controllers and the head-mounted display are captured by an identification system. The captured data is highly individual and it allows to determine the identity of the user through a deep learning classifier. At this point, it is important to note that these bowling or archery scenarios are not intended as a drop-in replacement for a password prompt. Instead, they enable an implicit interaction with an identification scheme where users behave naturally with the task but provide the required spatial data for the identification scheme on the fly. We moreover seek to better understand the role of behavioral biometrics in user identification and especially the connection to physiologic biometrics within them. A movement that intends to solve a task is first of course a form of behavior, thus falls into behavioral biometrics. But the capabilities to move are also partly defined by, for example, the length of one's arms, which means that physiology also plays a role. Virtual reality gives us the chance to explore this relationship as we try to eliminate the influence of physiologic biometrics by imposing a body normalization in VR. To do so, we impose a height normalization where each user has the same virtual height of 168 centimeters. Shorter or taller persons subsequently have their virtual height reduced or enlarged to match this exact value. We proceed in the same fashion with the arms of each user, which is set to a span of 70 cm measured from the front of the head to the hand. A combination of both is also possible, where both the arms and the height is normalized. We evaluated our approach in a lab-based user study using a repeated measures design. The study took place in two sessions, where each session was conducted on a different day. Our independent variables were first, scenario with two levels, bowling versus archery, and second, type of normalization with four levels, following a counterbalance design. We acquired 16 participants and tested them for both activities for 12 repetitions per body normalization on a standard Oculus Quest device. Afterwards, we created multiple feature sets and trained recurrent neural networks and multi-layer perceptrons with the data obtained from the first day of the study. We validated the models exclusively with data from the second day. Each validation was performed per activity and per type of normalization so that only data of the same kind was compared. In total, we find a validation accuracy of up to 90% for archery and 68% for the bowling activity. We also found several significant increases in the identification rate that were imposed by the body normalizations where especially height normalization had a large impact. We also tested the acquired scores in the activities if the body normalization had any effect on performance and could not find significant differences there. Further, we asked the participants if they felt any change and only two participants mentioned this on their own during bowling and another two during archery. More participants realized the changes once we asked more detailed, but only less than half of them realized the changes at all. To conclude, the data that can easily be collected with a standard off-the-shelf HMD is suitable for identification and contains highly specific information. When utilizing deep learning, data normalization is a best practice. A body normalization can further increase this effect and boost the identification accuracy significantly. Moreover, we have not seen a significant difference in user performance imposed by the body normalizations, which could be perceived only by less than half of our participants. Thank you for your attention.